Hi, my name is Jamie, and today I will be doing a critical review of Peter Pan. Ah yes, Peter Pan. The lovable story about a boy who never grows up still remains a popular text to this day. What started as a play written by James M. Barry that debuted in 1904 with critical success has later been retold for many generations. No matter what decade you grew up in, you are likely to have crossed paths with one or more adaptation. Whether it was the silent movie from the 1920s, the Disney cartoon, the 2003 live-action film, the stage musical, a prequel, or even a sequel, Oh God, no, not those. Ugh, did anyone like those? Peter Pan still holds a special place in many people's hearts. So for today's video, I will be looking into two particular critical lenses to see what adaptation still holds out nowadays. I will only be focusing on three different adaptations of Peter Pan, since if I covered every single one, this video would be a lot longer. I will be reviewing the Disney cartoon, the live-action film from 2003, and the stage musical. The first critical lens we will view the adaptations with is racism. As many know, in the story of Peter Pan, there is a tribe of Indians that inhabit Neverland. Their princess, Tiger Lily, is saved from drowning by Peter Pan. Being that the play was written in 1904, Indians were represented as caricatures since they were a popular fantasy trope of the times. So, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Many adults realize when re-watching the Disney cartoon that the movie they adored as children had very racist undertones. The Indians are shaded bright red and are portrayed as brutish and have a limited vocabulary that includes the how noise and making loud noises with their mouths. Teach him, pale face brother, all about red man. Good. This should be most enlightening. Uh, what makes the red man red? When did he first say, uh, uh say, uh? Why did he ask you how? We translate for you. On the beach, what Bonda means, and on the beach, and on the beach, and on the beach. The stage musical has seemed to become more appropriate with each new production. The original Broadway cast had Caucasian actress Sandra Lee play Tiger Lily, who spoke with a very deep sounding voice. The production portrayed the Indians as goofy and not very smart. It's worse than you're probably thinking. Make too much noise. Listen to Tiger Lily. When on warpath, Kathy Rigby production, however, portrayed the Indians as graceful and fierce warriors with much more integrity. If you were looking for the most politically correct portrayal of the stage musical, you would probably want to watch NBC's live telecast from 2014. NBC had Native American consultant from the Chickasaw Nation on board, and most of the lyrics in the 11 o'clock number, Uggawug, were changed from gibberish to actual Native American phrases. Honestly, it's one of the few redeeming qualities of that production. If you watched it, you would know what I mean. They found a mother. Oh, it's nice to have a mother. Mm. Peter Pan has found a mother. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 
One detail that I love in the film is that Tiger Lily is played by Carson Gray, an actress of Iroquois descent. I think that is amazing since the role is so often whitewashed in Western cinema. Even though her tribe seems to be also played by actors of similar cultures, they focus less on the tribe as a whole and focus more on Tiger Lily as a character. I really liked that since she does not always have that much screen time or even have lines in some adaptations. When she does speak in the movie, she speaks in Iroquois since the actress is bilingual. It actually makes for a really funny scene. We search as ever for Peter Pan and his secret hideout. Luckily, two boys of his acquaintance were seen falling into this part of the jungle. Have you seen them? Easy, seen the Nusquas. Soon quit to hit go. Zatakaras, Sakstoha, Tanu, Setko. She says sorry, but no. The second critical lens we will be discussing are gender roles. The stage musical does a good job with portraying Wendy as she was in the book, loving and sweet with underlying feelings for Peter. However, I've always felt that this portrayal of her character always came off as a little bland with little to no personality traits. I believe that the Disney cartoon portrays the most gender stereotypes out of all the versions. It is not so much the portrayal of Wendy, since she is always very polite and never really does anything wrong. It's the way she's treated by the other characters. Get on with it, girl. A jealous female can be tricked into anything. Girls talk too much. <laughs> yes. She's the target for many commands and cruel jokes throughout the movie, mainly from Peter. I've always believed, even growing up, that this portrayal of Peter is incredibly selfish and never takes Wendy for granted. Look at this scene, for example. What's she doing here? And in her nightdress, too. Come on, dearie. Join us for a swim. Oh, please, I'm not dressed oh, up. but you must. We No, no, please. Too good for us, eh? You <laughs> Just having a little fun, weren't you, girls? That's all. We were only trying to drown her. You see? He's an asshole. She sticks up for herself in one scene, but other than that, that's really it. By the end of the movie, you can still tell she idolizes Peter. But by far, my favorite portrayal of Wendy is in the 2003 film. Unlike other adaptations, they make the character of Wendy strong and independent. She plays pirates with her brothers and dreams of a life of adventure. Girlies, said Hook, we have come for ye glass slippers. Who be you to order me about and call me girly? She stands up to Peter on many occasions throughout the film and never lets him push her around. I think here she is a character that young girls can look up to. I also feel that by making her less prim and proper, it gives more of a sense as to why she would want to not grow up in the first place. So with all the claims that I've made today, you may now be wondering which version of Peter Pan holds up the best nowadays. My answer would definitely be the 2003 film. It presents Wendy as a strong protagonist and also has the strongest plot. It also has great technical specs and a great big dose of action and adventure. Now, technically, like I said, Peter Pan Live is the most politically correct with its portrayal of the natives, but what do you think about it? Does it really work with the time period of the show? Peter Pan was written during a time when people were not so racially sensitive However, this does not excuse the racist portrayals in the cartoon or other musical productions. The 2003 film does not make fun of Native American culture and is still able to stay accurate to the original text. Also, Peter Pan Live was just terrible. I mean, it's not worth watching. It's 
that bad. The casting's bad. The execution is bad. Just, just don't watch it. What the hell was that? So, if you already haven't seen it, go watch the 2003 film. I have a good feeling you'll enjoy it.